Hello. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I would like to present a part of my PhD thesis, which is about strike slip um, uh, tectonics and extensional systems. And High Atlas is a part of it, which, is, which works as a case study and to see what's happening in, in a basin during a translational regime. So previous works uh, uh, in the High Atlas are focusing mostly in the contractional event and also the salt tectonics, which is pretty much synchronous on what I'm gonna show you later on. But I want to show that it's not only about salt, but there is also a tectonic mechanism uh, in this event. Uh, so briefly, uh, the, uh, the evolution of the High Atlas and generally the Northwest Africa started in the um, was affected by three major events. The first one was the late uh, Paleozoic Erkinian orogeny, uh, where we for which formed the northeast, southwest, and east, north, northeast, west, southwest structures, which formed the template for the Atlas system. And then we have in the late Triassic the Atlantic opening, and uh, which led to the continental breakup in the Middle uh, Jurassic. Uh, which pretty much was synchronous uh, to the Tithian opening. And we have a post-rift uh, phase, the stational phase, uh, which is uh, with sinistral motion in the middle Jurassic, which is based on the um, plate reconstruction. And finally, we have the Erkinian orogeny, uh, the Alpine orogeny, I'm sorry. Um, and we have the collision of uh, um, we have the alpine inversion and we have the uh, collision with Iberian and European uh, plates and this is what inverted the atlas system so we are going to focus on the mesozoic uh, extensional event and we are going to try to uh, answer the questions when was the translation active how the stress uh, changes laterally uh, in the high atlas and also we have the inherited structures and we are going to try to see if they were active and if we have a uh, new form structure as well and also, I would like to mention that we have Middle Jurassic, Early Cretaceous volcanism, which are not um, well dated. So I'm going to talk about this later in the slides. So here are the places where I went, uh, just to show where we are on the mountains, on the Central High Atlas. Here is Morocco, and we are in the Central. And we went mostly in the Central, and the transition from Central to Eastern. And these are the tectonic, the structural maps the geological maps to have an idea. Um, so the results show that we have two orthogonal ext two um, extensional phases, one orthogonal and one oblique. Uh, the orthogonal was in the late Triassic until the early early Jurassic. We saw reactivated, uh, we saw uh, that the uh, structures were reactivated and uh, these formed uh, troughs, relay ramps, uh, maybe bridge relay ramps, and maybe we have a little bit of salt tectonics. And also we have uh, the oblique extension that started the earliest in the late early Jurassic until the late middle Jurassic or the early Cretaceous. And from west to east, we have extensional um, structures. Then we go to more contractional, uh, transpressional, and then more extensional again. Uh, so before I go through the outcrops, I would like to mention that we identified this, uh, the regional scale structures like the northeast southwest, but there were mostly uh, valleys or white um, uh, fracture zones, and it's difficult to do uh, structural analysis there. So we focused mostly on the stratigraphy and what structures we can find there. So exactly next to the uh, a regional um, structure, we identified north and southwest uh, smaller scale faults that show um, growth strata in the early Cretaceous and later inversion. But just to make sure that this is not only local, we performed stratigraphic uh, analysis um, that show in the early uh, Jurassic that shows uh, fanning towards the north uh, west and against these um, regional scale structures. And we are moving further south. So here we see an outcrop on which in the background we have Triassic basalts which are related to the salt. And we see also uh, east-west uh, trending uh, structures. And also fanning in the early Jurassic towards the south. Someone would say that this is related to the salt only, but 
We did also stratigraphic analysis away from the structure, and we saw that the fanning also occurred uh, towards the north as well. It was north or south, so against east-west threading faults. And also we are able to find a series of tension gauses, and here we see a conjugate set of tension gauses uh, that if we um, restore it, so it's mostly orthogonal um, extension with uh, sigma three uh, kind of uh, northwest southeast. And then I'm going to move to the oblique extensional phase. Um, here in Naida Tab, we are in this place. This outcrop is along the road, so you see three faults which are a little bit closer to each other. I have cropped the distance because there was nothing else to see, and we see a steep um, extensional fault with a growth strata and laterally also changes uh, the thickness. And basically we see a strike slip hostile termination with extensional component in the uh, middle Jurassic. And then we are moving south, we are here, and we see northwest, uh, southeast, and northeast, southwest, and north, northwest, south, southeast. Um, strike slip faults with the uh, extensional component. As you see, the orange and the green ones are totally are definitely thicker than this side. And these faults eventually uh, get involved into a flower structure with um, thin middle Jurassic side uh, wall extensional faults. Uh, so these faults are mostly north, east, southwest. And here is the structure, how I interpret it. Um, of the flower structure, I interpreted the flower structure, and here are the uh, strike slip here, and this one is what we see here. And then we are moving further east. What I'm gonna show you now is my interpretation. Uh, you can say your opinion later on. I'm pretty happy to hear it because I really need uh, different opinions in this place. And um, so my interpretation is that all of this fanning that we see in this area is due to a uh, magma welling in a salt area. And um, someone would say this is only salt, but I believe this is mostly um, 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 the, the uh, volcanics. And we see here some uh, gap as well. Um, though that would raise the question, uh, how do the volcanic cycles the salt diapirism? And if we could see some differences with salt uh, tectonics, so we can distinguish if it's only salt or it's it's from uh, magma as well. But this is a different story. I'm not going to talk about that. So if we go a little bit uh, here, further southeast, we identified also some structures uh, that show two different generations of tensor gauges and veins, and also we found some joints as well. Here we see the CR-related uh, structures that are not related to the alpine uh, orogeny uh, because they are pretty much mostly northwest southeast. Yes. Um, and if we combine all of them together, these structures and the previous funding of the uh, stratigraphy, we could say that in the middle Jurassic in Agudalu region, we have a transgression uh, stress regime. And then we are moving to the last uh, outcrop, which is the Aries region. And here it has been interpreted as a mini salt basin. Uh, I agree with that, but there are also more structures that we can find in this area. Uh, here we see tension gauses. The black ones are alpine, relate, alpine inversion related, but cross cut the oldest ones, the, the red ones, which are very consistent with these structures here where we see also styrolites and sear. Um, so with all of these, the structures show that we have mostly east-west threading um, faults and tension gauses that are uh, northeast, southwest, and up to east-west threading uh, trends. And then the rest are uh, alpine inversion related. And then if we go south here, we identified an anticline which is northwest southeast trending. And we see also some growth strata happening uh, towards the north. And uh, I, for, I forgot to mention that we found some um, different joints and cleavage, uh, different trends of joints and cleavage uh, that could be active during 
any, any event. So we gathered everything together and we could identify two different stress uh, tectonic events. One which is the youngest one, which is related to the alpine invasion. I don't know if you can see the yellow ones are the tensile gauss stress. You uh, are 10 minutes. Have... Okay. Uh, and uh, this basically show northwest southeast the uh, sigma one trend. While if we, uh, sorry, I got confused. <laughs> and um, the rest of the tensile gases show mostly northeast southwest sigma one, which is very consistent with what the stress regime would be to form the undecline. So to conclude, we have the orthogonal extension, um, that. Uh, occurred in the late Triassic until the early early uh, Jurassic, and we have the formation of cores, uh, relay ramps, um, and we have fanning towards the north or south against these faults that are not salt driven, and then we have the oblique extension, um, where we have the reactivation of pre-existing faults. We have the neon formed faults in the red, and we see. Um, mostly translational, but also transpersonal um, uh, structures. Um, also, I would like to mention about the middle Jurassic volcanism that I mentioned earlier, uh, that either it would be active um, in the middle Jurassic and um, that would be synchronous to the transtension, or there has been some dating at the northern and southern borders uh, of the atlas that shows its early Cretaceous. So it's either, either we have two different events or the early Cretaceous shows the, um, the marks at the end of the transtension in the high atlas. And we don't see any extensional, um, any transtensional uh, characteristics in the Cretaceous. And yeah, I just I got confused and this is what I have. Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm happy to hear any comments, questions, or any ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Cici. You were <laughs> supposed to get confused. Come on. <laughs> I got confused when you told me you have 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to. <laughs> no, okay. thank you. It was really nice and yeah, really clear. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Do we have some questions? Yeah, uh, Mark, do you, you have a question, please? Yeah, it's more of a comment than anything else. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is um, the modeling by Bruno Vondeville showed that when you have salt mini basins and a polygonal network of diapirs, et cetera, which you have in the high atlas and the central high atlas, that you can get vertical axis rotation of mini basins. And so you can get both transpression and transtension at the same time. You can get different orientations, and it can be quite confusing. And I'm not saying that plays a role here, but it's something to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah, that, that's very pertinent. Thanks. Uh, I have a question if nobody is raising her hand. Uh, yeah, a question from someone not familiar with the area. You describe uh, only brittle structures, brittle deformation. Uh, for example, on the flanks of your uh, mega basin at the regional scale, do you observe some uh, more, uh, some deeper or uh, ductile deformation, or it is really just brittle? Yeah, it is really that. Okay, okay. So do you on, on the sides on the flanks of your basin you never meet, for example, the yeah uh, deeper basement stuff that is no, the no, no. Um, there was a basement outcrop further east, but um doesn't really show anything for me. So I can't say. Okay. Um yeah, Paula, you have a question? That's it. Yes, I have, um, yeah. I have a quick one. Yeah, thank you very much for, for the talk. That was really nice. Uh, and your figures are really nice, by the way. Really cool figures. Um, so the question I have is in your concluding uh, cartoon, it, you kind of showed that sigma three orientation remained the same, but then you from, yeah. It, I can say it again if you want to. Yes, you can, can put it up again. Uh, so just switch. Yeah. So, Dark here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So your sigma three orientation remains the same from A to B, um, right? 
not really. It changes a little bit towards the west. It's not very clear. I need to redraw this uh, well, diagram. No, okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but either way, it's still yeah. generally west-ish, right? Um, so it seems like you're inferring that it was primarily the sigma one that. Yeah, rotated. sigma one mostly changes from uh, vertical to sub horizontal or, or sub horizontal. Vertical. Yeah. And what explanation would you have for the primary control of that? Um, I think it's because of the opening of the Atlantic at the Tithian, at the Tithis. So okay. you have two different uh, opening directions that maybe this uh, causes the semi-style movement. Awesome. Thank you.